Now Perdita is at that side. Uh oh, she didn't like me. Oh my gosh. I don't have the squirts anymore. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Take a look at this Arizona mountain king snake here. These guys are about to go into hibernation. I'm kind of saying my last goodbyes probably next week or so. We're going to put them down into hibernation. But you know, I'm over here at BHB and I realized that lately I have spent a lot of time at the Reptarium. I love it over there, but I still love it here. But I read your guys' comments about a bunch of things and I've heard some people saying like, hey, can we get more of BHB? So I'm going to give you a little BHB fix as we're going on here but other people have been saying hey can you put more of the crew in the vlog I could totally see why people want to you know know and see more about me pretty interesting guy I miss you guys too I've also had a ton of comments over the last few weeks saying Brian do some more stuff on beautiful leopard geckos like this sun glow hell white and yellow I had a lot of people asking show more Bowser people absolutely love Bowser and so do I my point is, is I read your comments and I'm always listening to you guys I think today I'm gonna start with trying to do a little bit of education stuff. People said that I show the animals, but I don't talk a lot about how to care for the animals. So let's go ahead and start with big snakes. How do you keep a big snake like Lucy right here? Obviously, each cage is gonna be a little bit different, so there's some things that you have to keep in mind. Let's start talking about temperature here. So basically, you want a hot side and a cool side of the cage. Let's see where she's at right now. Right now, she's at 81 degrees on this thing. But you can see if I come up here, it's actually upper 90s where if she wanted to climb onto this rock. If she wants to climb onto this rock over here, it's about 85 degrees. And then actually the cool side of the cage is all the way down to about 78 degrees. So you want to give them a lot of variety. Obviously this is a really large enclosure, so she has a lot of options. All the way from almost 100 degrees down to 78 degrees and all kinds of stuff in between. If you have a smaller cage, you just really want to be about 90 to 95 degrees on a hot spot with the cool side basically down at the low 80s. And give them that option so they can thermal regulate if they eat and they want to digest, they're going to go to the hot spot. If they're cooling off, say, for breeding or something like that, they're going to go to the cold side. You get my idea. Now, you certainly want a nice water basin, if at all possible, because big snakes do like to soak if they can. If you don't have a large enough cage, at least something that they can get water. Definitely make sure you change that water at least three or four times a week at minimal. Or if it's soiled, like every day that she soils the water, we change it, no matter what. Even if we just change it the day before. And then as far as humidity goes, we're going to keep the humidity at about 50 to 60 percent in a cage like this. One of the ways you can do that in this cage is again a large water basin. This is actually reptile prime coconut bedding here that retains moisture really really well and so basically what happens is we can actually mist this down, brings the humidity up and that really helps out as well. And if you're having a problem you can even put like a moist hide box or something on that line. Again you want that humidity to be about 50 to 60 percent. That way that they can shed really well even though sometimes Lucy just blows her shed up. Even with the humidity as it is. Now going back to lighting, we actually keep these guys 12 hours of daytime, 12 hours of nighttime. You can manipulate that a little bit, but you gotta remember they're close to the equator, so they don't get a lot of temperature or light cycle really in the wild. They basically have a wet season and a dry season, a little dip in temperature, a little rise in temperature, and a little change in light, but not very much. We do actually have UV light in this cage. Most snakes don't need UV light so much, but we figured we'll go ahead and put it in. And that's basically how we're gonna keep a cage like this, which is Lucy. And again, each cage is going to be completely different, but as long as you know those parameters, take for instance Casper's cage. The hot spot over there is about 90 degrees. He has about an 85 degree temperature right over here, 84, 85 degrees. And where he's laying right now is actually about 78, 79 degrees. So we're giving the animal the options. You know, I think that's so important is give them a lot of opportunity to find what they want to be comfortable with. Again, right after Casper feeds, he's probably going to go spend some time on the hot spot. But because because it's getting to that time of the year where he's thinking about breeding, Casper has found the coldest spot in the cage and he's wanting to hang out there, which is completely fine. Let's go ahead and just stick with reticulated python so you have the same animal all across the board. But we have Night Fury right over here and let's see what temperature is. He's actually at 77 degrees, which is the cool side of the cage, but he can come right up over here and again, it's almost 90 degrees, giving him that temperature fluctuation. Let's go ahead and talk about food because I want to cover all the how-tos of keeping big snakes. With an animal like Night Fury here, he's just six months old, so he can eat a lot more often. We feed him every seven days, and he's going to actually get a medium rat. What you have to remember is as these giant snakes get larger, their metabolism actually slows down. Now, Perdita is at that side. Uh-oh, she's going to bite me. 
Oh my gosh. Wow, that was close. I've never seen that before. Perdita! What is going on, monkey? What you have to remember is as these giant snakes get larger, their metabolism actually slows down. Now with my girl Perdita here, she's still small enough where her metabolism is cranking along really well. As a matter of fact, when I open up the cage right now even, she's actually showing like she wants to bite me. What is going on, girl? What, what's the matter? It's okay. Who doggy? That was a close one for sure. The fact is we still feed her at least once a week and I just fed her a couple days ago and she seems hungry right now. But she is passing food through really quick. But as she gets larger and maybe another year behind her, her metabolism is going to start to slow down. When it comes to the bigger snakes like Daisy here, I mean their metabolism slows down a lot. So we actually only feed them a little bit larger meals. Again, Daisy's going to probably get a five to seven pound rabbit every 10 to 14 days because it takes them that long to metabolize. You got to remember that snakes never stop growing. So Daisy is going to grow till the day she passes away, but she's going to slow down tremendously. Again, in eight years, she got 17 plus foot. Now over the next eight years, she's probably only going to grow two or three foot. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Yep, watch out. So it's interesting, today all the snakes seem to be really cranky. There's been several really close calls, even Perdita of all snakes. It just seems like there's something in the air today. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Daisy rest here and get out of this cage. And literally, Daisy just took a lunge at me as I was climbing out of the cage. This is bizarre. I literally don't know my tamest snakes all seem to be a little bit edgy today. It has to be like barometric pressure or the breeding season or something wacky going on because they never do this type of stuff. But that's just it, guys. You have to always read the animals. You might have an absolutely tame snake. If it's giving you all the signals that you have to be careful, you have to read those signals because if you just blindly go and start handling animals and they do something, that could be a problem. So this just teaches you a lesson and even me a lesson to always be on guard. So let me know down in the comments if that covered some of the things about the how to take care of big snakes thing. I'll try to go through all of the comments and see what else you guys want to do. Again, I'll get more BHB. I'll show you guys leopard geckos. I'll show you ball pythons, I'll show you bigger snakes, I'll show you Bowser, I'll do all those things. Because I literally read your comments and I want to make sure you guys get everything you want. So let me know in the comments if I did a good job, you want to see more how-to type stuff like that, I'm happy to do it. I'm always trying to figure the best way to keep you guys entertained and educated. And even a lot of people had asked if I was going to do some more travel stuff. I promise you that travel is in my blood. I've just kind of been grounded a little bit with the Reptarium and I love being here now, but I do have to get some amazing travel coming up. We're off to Italy next month, down to Florida in about a week or two. Got to get out to LA. Going to do some stuff in Chicago. Going to definitely head over to Australia soon. So don't you worry. I promise that the scenery will change from time to time. So Kelsey, where are we at downstairs? What is going on? Downstairs, uh, we are getting ready for the 2019 breeding season. And actually, she's been waiting on me because I have to get some breeding schemes together. So, yes. uh, have yeah. you looked at my list yet? I have looked at my list and I'm starting to work on it. And basically, what will happen is I'll come up with a basic scheme that I'm going to let Kelsey kind of make mm -hmm. the final decisions. And hopefully, we'll start breeding ball pythons and all the other pythons by the end of this month, by the absolute latest. I know I'm tying you up. I know the girls are ready. I've even seen some leaving scent marks in their cages. Oh, we're ready to go. All right, we got to get This is on me. I've got to get it going. Going. Guess who's back, Eric? You got over the Ebola virus, then. We're, it's still working its way through. Uh -oh. I actually, what? you know, I just was rummaging through my old. I was just taking some medicine. I feel a little better, you know, oh but. My gosh. So you still have it going on, though. I don't have the squirts anymore. Oh but, my gosh! You know, too much information. <laughs> Too I'm much just, information. I'm just kidding. No, I, I'm feeling a lot better. I, I'm getting there. Just taking some time. I can't stay back sick. here. I'm you stay, you back, stay here. back there just to be safe. So. Exactly. All right. Well, it's good to have you back, buddy. Thank you. Can you wear a mask? I'm, I might have to. Okay. By law. All right. Bye been a while since I've updated you on this little girl right here. I should say getting big girl. Of course, this is Big Bertha the Lichianus. Look at how big she is. Remember when she was just a little tiny baby? She is not only adorable, but she is just a puppy dog. I mean, what an absolutely gorgeous animal. And then here's our little male lychee. Oh my God, he is so adorable. I mean, they grow so quick. I remember Big Bertha was literally this size like three months ago. I can't imagine a year from 
now and they're both huge. I absolutely love them. And there is no doubt that we'll be adding some more Lee Giannis. And with all that being said, I just want to know that I hear you guys. I believe in you guys. I love you guys. And I certainly listen to you guys. I do not want you to become bored with the vlog. I want you to enjoy every morning and evening or whenever you happen to be watching. I want you to look forward to the vlog because you guys mean so, so much to me. And I wish you guys an absolutely amazing, amazing day, evening, or whenever you happen to be watching. With that said, I am going to go ahead and end the vlog and ask you guys to do me a couple favors. Can you smash that like button? Turn those post notifications on. Make a comment down below. Let me know what you think about what I told you during this vlog. Be kind to someone today, and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow.